my organization, so Pay My Area Vegan Educators, we're, we're a vegan advocacy group. We want to do the best that we can to educate. The vegan population in the United States increased by 600% in 2017. People find aspects of veganism at different points. So some people find it through the environment, some people find it through health, some people find it through animals over the years. I would hear about issues related to dairy and issues related to eggs, and it just, I couldn't imagine that what I was hearing was true. I encourage people, you know, if you're questioning, to listen to others, but also look into it yourself. The dietary organizations I've looked at, they all make it very clear in their position statements that anyone can live vegan at any point in their life. So I think a lot of people think of veganism as a diet, but it runs the gamut. Um, but there's something that really fascinates me. It's veganic gardening. It's similar to organic gardening in that um, it doesn't use any like chemical pesticides. It doesn't incorporate anything from an animal. So it doesn't incorporate like bone meal or blood that you would find in organic gardening. Um, and we're starting to see some veganic farms pop up. One issue with animal agriculture is food waste. When you consider like 12 to 16 pounds of grain are needed to produce one pound of animal flesh, whereas you could feed a whole lot more people with that 12 to 16 pounds of grain. Right. Okay, so food waste is one. Um, a waste in clean water Water is precious. If you have like a, again, a pound of animal flesh takes about 2,500 gallons of water to produce. A pound of grain is about 25 gallons of water. So it's, it's, it's just staggering to think of. In animal agriculture, it takes more than 10 times the amount of fossil fuels to produce one calorie of animal protein than one calorie of plant protein. It doesn't mean that being vegan is all we should do. We should still try to not use our cars, right? Like we can ride bicycles and walk solar panels or wind. Um, that is something that we should still do. We should always be aspiring to do the best that we can for the environment. So if you could be more local with the plant-based food, that would be ideal. Yeah. And this is from the Institute for Agriculture and Trade Policy and from Brain. It's an organization, mm -hmm. GRA. Um, they found that the five largest meat and dairy corporations combined are responsible for more annual greenhouse gas emissions than Exxon, Shell, or BP. But the, the evidence is pretty clear that animal agriculture is really responsible for more damage than the whole transportation sector combined. We are so conditioned to think that we have to have meat or dairy or eggs in our diet. The UN has um, declared that really the one of the best ways that we can protect the environment is through plant-based eating. Our government subsidizes uh, animal agriculture, and then some of those subsidies go into the advertisements that we see. I think the government should be shifting subsidies away from animal agriculture. We also hear about milk, cheese and flesh being thrown away because the government is giving all of these subsidies. And to me, those are lives, right? They should be subsidizing plants. So I think there's some fear related to change or fear that I may never have that again. That's the other thing too. I think a lot of people just aren't aware that we can eat the same things. It's just made of plants. When we are educating, one of the things that we like to say is if you take yourself out of the equation and consider the, the person in me, or the animal in me, or the community in me, mm -hmm. then and you give them like a platform and some value, then you would choose to do whatever causes less harm. I think um, we're, we're feeling pressure in part because of the UN saying that there really is like 12 years to get us back on track. 
Right. And if we know that like this is a huge puzzle piece that so many people are going to blah, 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 blah. But luckily not you and luckily not these other organizations because you welcomed us into the fold. The, the dairy farmers who are savvy and aware are switching. So I think we, we don't want anyone to be unemployed. Mm -hmm. um, but this happens with progress. It happened with like the landline telephone companies, right? Mm -hmm. And record players like mm -hmm. you get CDs. So with progress, there, there needs to be change and there, you need to adapt to the needs of the time. As we vote with our dollars, when I buy soy milk, and I'm saying I'm voting for soy milk and not cow's milk. But our group showed the last pig. It's about a farmer who was raising pigs yeah. and he was recognizing that it wasn't right to kill them no matter how lovely their lives were. So he switched to growing crops and he is uh, now a crop farmer. So it can be done. 